I just came back from Tasmania and there are a few things I found interesting and I really want to talk about. Tasmanian devils, which are cute, but not as cute as you can see right now on your screen. Nature, beautiful hikes, interesting animals, deforestation and biosecurity. And Mona, uh, a privately owned museum, which is a house to a poop machine. Before I will get into it, if you started following me because of my Forester build and my solo road trip around North America with a midpoint in Alaska, don't worry, it's coming. I am planning to head all the way to Alaska from the East Coast probably in spring if the weather permits. So if you want to experience it with me, please stick around. And now a few fun facts and my thoughts about Tasmania. Tasmania is a small Australian island, more or less the size of West Virginia. It is also the least populous state in Australia with, its, I think, 570,000 residents, out of which 40% lives in Hobart. It has the smallest economy of all Australian states uh, and lives mostly out of tourism, agriculture and aquaculture. More or less 42% of its land is under some kind of protection like national parks and heritage sites. And what is really interesting is that in um, the early 1900s, more than 70,000 convicts were forcibly moved to Tasmania to work in mines, on farms, to cut down trees and build roads. Nowadays, Tasmania is a really popular destination for tourists which appreciate fresh air, like fresh food and want to see animals which basically don't exist anywhere else in the world. One of the species is Tasmanian devil, which is cute but not as cute as the main character of one of Looney Tunes cartoons. Tasmanian devils uh, many, many, many years ago used to also live in mainland Australia, but right now are only present in Tasmania and unfortunately are extremely endangered. I went to one of two sanctuaries in Tasmania to find out more about them and most of the information that I will give you here comes from a guy who takes care of them on a daily basis. Here is a trigger warning. I attended a feeding session. So in this part of the video, you will see three adult males eating raw meat, uh, to be more precise, wallabies' legs. The guy said that wallabies are not their favorites. They actually love munching on wombats. So if you're sensitive to this kind of footage, please skip this part of the video. <laughs> they are carnivorous marsupials which have the strongest jaws in the world compared to their body size but they're not the best hunters that's why in the first part of 20th century they were seen as a threat to livestock in 1941 they became protected but unfortunately not many of them survived and due to inbreeding a weird virus popped out it causes tumors in their jaws, on their faces and near their eyes, which are super painful and in the end lead to starvation. It spreads through biting and <sighs> Tasmanian devils are pretty aggressive, but among each other, more about it in a second. They do breed in captivity, but sanctuaries cannot release them into the wild because of this virus. My guide at the sanctuary said that actually there is hope thanks to the um, development of RNA vaccines in the last three years. And scientists are really close to uh, finding a vaccine which will immunize devils from this virus and in result they will be able to be released into the wild and they're also planning to uh, vaccinate all wild devils, which are not that many in Tasmania left. They are also scavengers. They feed at night, so many cars hit them. So how do they breed? The mating ritual is pretty aggressive. Females like dominant males. They like being chased into submission. Male usually drags a female into his den, pushes her around, bites her, scratches her, and this this behavior uh, puts her into kind of a trance and in result she lets him mate with her. Mating can take up to one hour. A pair can mate 
multiple times over a two-day period. Then usually the male is super tired and lays by the exit, keeping an eye on the female and female tries to sneak out. Females in the wild try to have uh, the best leader with best genes. So this is a kind of a game that uh, he wakes up, he drags her back in into a den. We shouldn't judge it. This is nature. This is how it is. I think it is actually interesting. That's why I am sharing it here. Young ones are born after 21 days and they're the size of a rice grain. Uh, they race into the pouch. They don't have legs. They don't have tails. They don't have lungs. And they attach themselves into one of four teats and stay attached up to 100 days. Usually in the wild, not all four of them will survive because the female is not able to take care of all four of them. In captivity, sanctuaries usually take away two joeys from the mother and bottle feed them. And those two rascals are nine months old. They were bottle fed. Soon they will be mature enough to start mating. Devils live up to five years, but they mate for two or three years. The sanctuary I visited also takes care of another species of endangered marsupials, quills. They have the second strongest jaws in the world compared to their body size. And they're excellent hunters. They actually usually sit on branches and wait for their prey to pass by and then jump at the prey and bite through their neck. Uh, They also feed on large juicy insects and uh, they are present both in Tasmania and in mainland Australia but unfortunately foxes killed them in mainland Australia, foxes which were of course brought here by settlers. Sanctuaries tried to release them in Tasmania. The problem in Tasmania is that the climate change has an, in, has an influence on the insects and those quills basically don't have many insects to feed on. There is also a problem with the fact that humans are taking over their natural habitats. So uh, what the organizations that take care of them try to do is to um, found sanctuaries in mainland Australia, which are, you know, enormous, which are actually fenced, so foxes cannot eat them. And why do I share this information with you? First of all, because I love random facts and I secretly hope that you also love them and second of all because i visited tasmania which is this little paradise on earth with all those unique animals and it struck me how big of influence the global warming have on those species which are almost extinct and if we'll keep doing what we are doing to the earth and to those little ones which cannot really protect themselves anymore from us we will make them suffer um and we are making them suffer and uh, i cannot really find words to um express how sad i am uh, to experience it it was amazing to see all those animals those two in captivity but i also saw wombats, um, echidnas, and wallabies. Oh, and also black cockatoos. Black cockatoos are also extremely endangered. And I was as happy as a little kid seeing them for the first time. And I really hope that all those good-hearted people or big-hearted people will actually um, save them from um, disappearing from this marble cold earth. I have actually mixed feelings about efforts which Australian government puts into protecting their nature. On the one hand, when you come to Australia, uh, you have to make sure that you don't bring any food, any nuts, fruits, veggies. Same thing happens when you fly even from Australia to Tasmania. There is biosecurity there. There are dogs which smell if you have anything that can uh, alter their ecosystem. Also, when you hike in Tasmania, many trails have brushes and some kind of sprays which you have to use on your shoes in order not to bring any microbes into that environment. On the other hand, I heard from many people which live here that Tasmania has a, has a problem with deforestation. Quick Google search will show you that they are still cutting down trees which are 
hundreds of years old uh, and Australian government doesn't do much about it and I think that Tasmania is such a gem it has such a unique ecosystem that Australian government should protect as much as it can from deforestation and uh, any further harmful influence. I started my Tasmanian road trip in Hobart where I went to Mona which is the biggest privately founded museum in the southern hemisphere and it belongs to a really eccentric guy who doesn't hide the fact that he made his money as a professional gambler. The whole experience starts at the ferry where they serve wine from a winery which belongs to Mona. When you arrive there is a small building, a few sculptures and a big lawn where people eat, drink and dance. Here we go. When you enter the building there is it occurs that everything is underground. You are surrounded by sandstone and by the art from all over the place. From Christian Orthodox icons to um, Picasso, from a wall covered with 151 ceramic vulvas to a poop machine. And maybe a little bit more about the poop machine, which is one of the most controversial um, art pieces in that museum. It is called Cloaca Professional, and it was created by a really controversial Belgian artist. And the whole concept is that this piece of art imitates our digestive system. It has glass vessels which are connected with tubes and it gets fed twice a day. One of the employees brings real food with wine and feeds the machine and then the machine digests everything. Once a day the machine defecates and visitors know that they have to come at I think 2 p.m. Uh, to see it, see it and smell it. Unfortunately I didn't have a chance to record any of this uh, because uh, apparently the machine was overfed during Christmas and New Year's Eve and it was constipated so um, you can sit here in my video, but uh, if you are curious, you can go and um, search uh, search it online. Why am I <laughs> when I why am I talking about it? I think that those kinds of places like Mona are interesting, and it doesn't matter if you like quirky or weird things. I think that any interaction with any kind of art makes you think, makes you form opinions so I always visit places like this to broaden my horizons and I saw many happy people there. The owner started it as a hobby project and now it is the most popular tourist attraction in Hobart. During my stay in Tasmania we hiked a lot and by we I mean my sister and I. We went to Cradle Mountain National Park where I actually saw devils and all those animals uh, which you can see in this video and we also went to Port Arthur and hiked Cape Pillar. That was a really challenging hike. It took us seven hours to cover 21 miles and we had to do it that fast because our plane was at 8.30 p.m. I don't know how many more hours to go. <laughs> it was beautiful. like. The final point or like the midpoint was beautiful, but it was super hot. There were venomous snakes everywhere. So if you ever go to Tasmania and plan to go for a hike, please bring snake gators. We didn't have them and I was terrified. We were walking really loud intentionally because apparently snakes run away when they can hear or sense vibrations of footsteps and I could see them everywhere. There was a freshly shedded two meter long snake skin on a trail. I could see their eyes. I could see their tails running away from us. So to protect your self and to protect your psyche always bring 
snake gators with you to Australia. If you are still here, thank you so much for watching this video and I hope you found it interesting. Also, thank you for every comment and like that you leave under my videos. They mean a lot to me. I have fun filming them and I have fun sharing my experiences and knowledge I collect along the way. Uh, so I hope I will see you in my next video in which I will sum up my Australian trip. Bye.